What's up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday. Today is Friday, February 1st. Welcome to this week's video update. This is a weekly update we do for pro members exclusively, so welcome here. Before we jump into a review of this week's trade alerts, just want to recognize our member for getting recognized for who got caught being hot in the community. Helping other traders is what it's all about. Mike Tishner was this week's winner, and Mike had, uh, be, has become very active in the community, answering some other members' questions and posting uh, some different trade ideas, some trade alerts, uh, mainly around earnings announcements, which has been pretty cool to see what he's doing there. And so if you haven't checked that out uh, in the community this week, make sure you go back and check out some of Mike's posts. Uh, congrats, Mike. You got caught being hot. So let's jump over. Actually, before we jump into the alerts, I also want to point out I'm going to be doing a separate video like I do at the end of every month uh, where I recap all the trades, uh, all the closed trades. And that's really for the public. And because because the public, they're not pro members, so they don't get access to our current open positions. So I'll be doing a separate video just to go over the closed trades, but to give you guys a quick recap. 11 closed trades, nine of which were winners, a little over $1,500 in profits. So that starts off January. By the way, this uh, this new thing at the top of the performance page, it is clickable. So you can click it and expand it. I know it's kind of small, so it expands when you do click that. So you can check that out. And let's jump in to the platform and let's do a quick recap of where we're at year to date because as I mentioned, I want to I want to kind of keep you guys a little bit more up to date on where we are with the overall portfolio. And so this is year to date. And this shows, um, you know, all the different positions that we've had on or traded in 2019 uh, to give you an idea of where we're at. So just to give you an idea on 6B overall, we're up 150 bucks. Look at oil. I mean, we're up over fourteen thousand dollars from from where that was on at the end of December, December thirty first. So, coming back for us in a big way. Uh, we're down on the S and P. That's just our long put vertical. And what you'll notice is that on a, a lot of these short delta positions, because the market has really just been ripping higher since the beginning of the year, we're down uh, on some of those trades. Uh, but nat gas, we are up uh, about a th another thousand dollars since the beginning of the year. So coming back some in there, you can see DIA, one of our short delta positions, down about twelve hundred. I'm just kind of going over some of these bigger ones. Uh, Lululemon had a loss in there, nine hundred eighty-one, down a thousand in SPY. But overall, year to date so far, so for the month of January, up over ten thousand dollars on an account that we started with. It was. What was it around eighty six or eighty seven thousand? I can't remember. So, up over ten percent already year to date, which is is kind of crazy because you know if you look at our performance page, and and this is the difference between the closed trades and our overall portfolio. You know sometimes the closed trades are we gonna are going to reflect a better month, and sometimes our actual overall open P and L is going to represent a better month, but. Uh, I've found that this is the best way to do it because I, we don't want to give access to non-pro members, uh, uh, so we only want to show them our closed trades. So you know we're shown in January we only made a little over fifteen hundred dollars on our closed trades. Uh, our actual P and L is up over ten thousand dollars. So anyway, a good start to the year, and if we can get a little bit of downside action in stocks, uh, we'll we'll be having a phenomenal year. So let's uh, let's jump into the alerts for the week and go over what we did here. No trades on Monday. Uh, we, you know, we, there was no adjustments that were necessary. Volatility was contracting, so we didn't want to sell any premium that day. And so we didn't, we didn't have any alerts on Monday, but starting on Tuesday, January 29th, uh, we did a rolling adjusting trade in XLK. This was a long put vertical that we've had on for that short Delta exposure. And so we rolled that from Feb out to March, and we adjusted the strikes accordingly. And so let's go to the platform and take a look at XLK. So if we go to the Analyze tab, you can see it's it's bounced a little bit outside of our range now. Still just holding, holding this for that short delta exposure. 
and uh, and hopefully we get some of that soon because that would be very helpful for our portfolio. And just to give you an idea, we're at about three to one on our short delta versus theta ratio. So we like to be anywhere from one to one to five to one is kind of the range we like to we like to play in. So we're about three to one, so we're fine. Uh, obviously, the higher the market goes, the more and more short delta we automatically accumulate. And so we haven't really been adding any short delta positions in a while, but just that natural uh, market movement is is creating additional short delta. So we will, you know, if this thing keeps going up, we're going to either add some long delta positions or cut loose some short delta. So just look for that in the in the next couple of weeks, depending on what the market does. Obviously, if we get some downside, that would be helpful, and we, and we might be able to shed some of these short delta pieces and lower our short delta a little bit. But we're we're in good shape right now, where we at where we're at overall. Next trade was a closing trade in IBM. So we had we put on a post earnings short put vertical, and we closed that out booked booked right at fifty percent of max profit. We were in the trade for about six days, uh, so nice trade there. And let me just go to the chart and kind of show you what we did there. So remember, in our post earnings uh, short put verticals, what we like to do is if, if the market opens up over the expected move, uh, then what we like to do is sell puts or sell uh, put verticals, uh, because typically the market is going to stay steady to grind higher. That's exactly what happened here. And we got out with a nice profit on IBM. Next trade was a closing trade in uh, Microsoft. So we had a pre-earnings long straddle in Microsoft uh, that this did not work out. We, we ended up closing that for a loss. Never got the, the expansion in IV, never got, the, uh, never got the, the enough price movement to make that one profitable. So we took a couple hundred dollar loss on that one. Next one was a closing adjusting trade in EEM. So we closed out the put vertical side, price moved up outside of our range on our iron condor. So we closed out the untested side and then we're still holding the call vertical side. We did not add another centered uh, iron condor because implied volatility is a little bit lower under under that 50 level, it's at 43, which isn't, isn't too low to necessarily add one, but we're just trying to stay mechanical here. And if we do pop up, Above that 50 on the IV percentile, we would potentially look to add another one or somewhere close. It doesn't have to be exactly 50, but we do we do want to look at that as a measurement of the price of the options because if it's over 50, that means they are more expensive than they've been relative to the last year. And so that's that's what we use as a measure for high implied volatility. But let's look at EEM. And you can see, I mean, this thing's been super strong this year. Uh, let's take a look at our position here. So it broke out of our of our range here. It's hanging out right there. So we need a little bit of downside to get back into range. This is in Feb, which only have 14 days left to expiration. So if we can get a quick move down, great. We'll close that out and end up booking a profit on the entire trade. If not, we'll see where we're at overall with short delta, and we'll either close this one out and have to take a loss if it stays out of our range, or we'll potentially look to roll if we want to keep that uh, additional short delta on. But like I said, if the, if the market keeps moving higher, we're going to be accumulating short delta in, in several different positions. So we may just cut loose and, and take a loss. But we'll see what happens. Uh, we're due for a little bit of downside. So we'll see if we get it. Next trade was a closing trade in Google. So we did a pre-earnings long call in Google. Ended up booking a nice profit, over 30% profit after taking some heat most of the trade. And let's go to a chart of Google. Tell you if my platform will come up. Um, G-O-O-G-L. And I did have a couple people who, who accidentally traded G-O-O-G. And the difference is minimal. I mean, the only difference, I mean, there's a slight difference in the actual price but the, the stock volume and the options volume and liquidity is almost identical. The reason we trade Google is because it just has a tiny bit more liquidity. But if you traded Goog, it's not a big deal. Um, you're obviously just going to make, make sure you trade the prices that you get and not pay attention to the actual alert prices that we got here. So 
We got into this tray. We bought a call right here uh, on this day with this big blue bar down. Uh, but we got in at kind of early in the day. So price was up at the upper end of, range, of that range of that bar. And it immediately went against us pretty significantly. I think we were down about 600 bucks at one time on this trade. Uh, even down here, I think we were down up to about $800. But it bounced up, looked like it was coming back, and then it fell down again. And then, you know, just the last couple days, boom, boom, shot up, booked a profit of over 30%. So it ended up being a nice trade. Uh, the, the crazy thing is, you know, if, if we would have got in at the end of the day here, it would have popped up. We would have, we would have gotten a profit right away. We could have even played it again. Uh, but that's obviously hindsight and you got to play the cards you're dealt. And so that's what happens. Now, Google announces earnings on the 4th. Uh, which is uh, which is next week. So, but we're out of the trade. Nice profit in Google. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in IYR. So we entered a new iron condor in IYR in the March cycle with 42 days left. Uh, still holding our other one as well. I did mention I, I skewed this slightly and made it kind of a, a tighter iron condor just to get it uh, opted for more credit as opposed to a higher probability of profit. And let me move this up so you can see it. And I did this with a different number of contracts. As you can see, it gets a little confusing if you don't. So I did this one with four contracts. And you can see I put the, the put slightly closer in Delta than I did the call. So it's skewed just a little bit just because we have a lot of downside room on our other piece, which I'll show you in a second. But um, So we've got two pieces on here, two different uh, tight iron condors, I'll call them. And then here is our other piece, which is out of our range, but we did not adjust this by closing the untested side. And the reason is, if we just look at that put vertical, there's still a decent amount of premium in those options. So remember, we look, we use that break-even point. Oops, let me let me get back on this one. We use the break-even point as a trigger to say, hey, does it make sense to adjust at this point? So that's our. That's kind of our trigger to analyze the, the position. Uh, but in this case, then we always want to look at uh, the the untested side to see how much premium is left in there. And, and you know, we like to get to the point where there's very little premium left in there before we make the adjustment. You don't want to over adjust. And so that's why we went ahead and kept this on. And of course, if we get a little bit of down movement, uh, early next week and get back into range, then we'll just continue to keep this trade on and manage it as necessary. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in the queues. So let's take a look at that one. We've got two sets of short call verticals on in QQQ. This one moved uh, pretty far out of range. And this is the, it's this one here. Uh, the 166 one, no, I'm sorry. It's the one, 166. Okay. So it's this one here. It's the 172, 175. So this is the one we just rolled. It's the one that's three, uh, three strikes wide. You can see prices come down, uh, since we've done that roll. So price had come way out of our range, very little chance of getting back in February, which is the one we closed out of. Rolled that out to March and adjusted our strikes down to, uh, up to the 172, 175. So this is what we've got now. We've got the other short call vertical. Both of these were, were continuing to hold for that short delta exposure. You can see still, uh, price is still uh, barely in range on this one. So just holding for that short delta, short bias exposure in the QQQs. Next trade and lastly for the week was a closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we've got a couple pieces on here. This was our iron condor and price breached our upside. And so we went ahead and closed out the uh, untested side. And you can see, so price breached our, our upside break even, very lift, little value left in those, in, that, in those puts. And so we went ahead and closed those out. So now we're just holding this, hoping for a little bit of a snap back to the downside to get back into range. Uh, and then we've got... A, the other one, which is our other short call vertical, which was also from an iron condor where price moved up significantly. And on this one, I haven't rolled it yet. Uh, we will next week because we don't want to get assigned. And um, 
and and we just need to do something about it. And, and excuse me, we may just close it or we may roll it, but you know, there's very le- little value left in these options. We've got about fifty dollars in premium left. So instead of closing it out and saving that fifty bucks, I just you know I'm I'm hoping for a little bit of downside. And if it moves back up here, then then we'll make some of that back. Uh, but we will be either rolling or closing uh, next week on that one. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of these other positions, starting with forward slash six B, the British pound. We've got this adjusted strangle on here, which we've got a little bit of profit on overall, even after the adjustment. Uh, if we get a little bit of down movement and uh, and some more implied volatility contraction, we will be good to go on that one. And uh, let's see, let, let's take a look at FXB, which is the corresponding ETF, and take a look at where that implied volatility is now. Because if it does continue higher, yeah, implied volatility is still nice and high, so we'll most likely add to that one if we if we get a bounce higher. Uh, like I said, if we get a bounce lower, we'll, we'll book that profit and close it out for a winner. Oil, I mentioned this previously, how much money we've made back in oil just this year. And look at this. These are both of our pieces combined, but dead centered, just collecting that theta and letting that implied volatility contract. We've got these two different pieces on here. Both of them are inverted short strangles. Both of them are fairly centered. And so nothing to do on these except for weight. Both of these are out in the April cycle with 42 days left to, uh, to expiration. So a lot of time left here. Just going to continue to manage those as needed. ES, we've got this long put vertical. You can see prices move significantly out of range. So just waiting for a potential bounce back to the short side here. We've got 14 days left. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we will continue to roll this as we get closer to expiration. NG, Natty Gas. We've got these two pieces on here. Um, now, Nat Gas has actually worked against us this week. Uh, it's, it's continued its downhill slide. And, man, you know, I mean, I don't know about where you guys are, but it's been a cold winter here. And, you know, some of these reports come out, you know, we got this spike here, there's reports of the cold winter, nat gas prices needed to go up, and then right after that, just continue to slide and drop. Same thing here, reports came out, cold winter, low supplies of nat gas, huge spike up, and then it just, the bottom fell out. So that's why we don't trade news. Uh, that's why we trade what's in front of us. We trade implied volatility. We trade probabilities and statistics because you will always end up getting burnt. If you think you know what's going to happen, uh, good chances are the market's going to do the opposite. So uh, anyway, that's where we're at on that gas. We've got these two different pieces here, uh, both hanging out in the lower end of the range. You can see if we just got a little bit of an up move, we could get some profits pretty significantly. Obviously, if we continue lower, we're going to roll our calls down, stay mechanical in doing so. So let's take a look at these separately. You know, price is still within range here on this one. And then if we look at this one, price is barely in range here as well. So just continuing to manage that. Our old friend, wheat. We've got this iron condor, pretty dead centered, got some profit. uh, Looking for a little bit more before we book that one. Apple, uh, this is kind of the same situation as SPY, where price has just been crazy to the upside. And so we're almost at a max loss on this piece of the trade. So instead of closing it out and taking it, uh, we're going to wait till closer till expiration, see if we get a little, a little bit of a bounce or a little bit of a, 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 a drop lower and get a little bit of get a little bit of that back before we either close or roll, depending on where we're at with our overall short delta. Costco, uh, Costco's uh, moved down almost 2% today, so got nicely back into range for us. We've got some profit there, waiting for a little bit more downside before we do anything with that one. DIA. So let's look at the Feb first, because this was kind of the same situation as we've got in the QQQs. Now, there's still a decent amount of premium left here. So this was one that I considered rolling. But since I already did it with QQQ, and since DIA and QQQ are so correlated, the Dow and the NASDAQ are moved very close in, in tandem. Uh, I wanted, you know, we like to spread out those rolls, don't do it all in one day. So we'll we'll end up rolling this one probably early next week. Hopefully before we do that, we get a little bit a little bit of a slide lower. And then we've also got our March piece on as well, where price is still within range. So just holding that for that short delta exposure as well. 
I mentioned EEM, EWW, uh, hanging out kind of the upper end of the range here. We're profitable on this trade, but we'd like to get some more. If we get a little bit of downside in EWW, we'll book that one for a profit. If it moves to the upside, implied volatility is a little bit lower, but if we do get a spike up and it moves lower, we may we may add to this one, but at this point, we're not looking to add. EWZ, same story. Implied volatility is really contracted in here, uh, but the uh, it's in the upper end of the range, so looking for a little bit of downside before we do anything there. IWM, we've got uh, two pieces on here. We've still got a short call vertical from Feb. It moved out of range, so we closed out the untested side. Uh, looking for a little bit of a, uh, a bounce lower before we do anything there. And then we've also got this full iron condor that we put on that we've got a little bit of profit, but waiting for some more before we do anything on that one. IYR, I mentioned that. Qs, I mentioned. SMH, we've got a, an adjusted strangle here, and you can see price is hanging out in the upper end of the range here as well. Could use some downside to benefit that trade. If we take a look at the implied volatility, it has been contracting as well, along with most symbols. So if we get a little bit of a pop higher in implied volatility, we may look to add to that one, but just holding steady for now. Uh, we talked about SPY, we talked about XLK, XLV. This one's been a little bit frustrating. We've we I know some of the members actually booked a profit when it was at about I think it was almost at about 50% of max profit at one point, but we were holding on for a little bit more. We needed the short delta at that time, and now price has run away from us outside of our range. So we will uh, we'll address this here over the next week or so and either roll or close that one, depending on what happens. And then XRT, uh, we've got some profit on this one, and the profit line's a little skewed right now because the market's closed, uh, but uh, we've got some profit. Looking for a little bit of downside, more implied volatility contraction before we do anything in XRT. You can see the IV percentile right at the 50 level. So if it moved out of our range, we could look to potentially add to that one. But we would like it to just move down a little bit more. So that's where we're at with all of our trades and alerts and positions. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.